Hey, welcome back tubers. So, in order to keep my channel alive, I really don't want to create a whole heap of different channels for each different thing. I've tried that in the past, it didn't work for me. So, I think moving forward, this channel will have a name change. Um, something Pete did, does stuff or something I don't know. But it won't be HP Powerwall anymore, I don't think so. And on that note, I'm going to start doing cars. I'm going to start doing things I don't know how to do, but I'm going to give it a crack anyway. Um, a bit like console repairs. So I've got an Xbox Series X here. HDMI port problem, apparently, allegedly, that's what I was dropped in for. Um, so you hook it up to the television, no video output, seems to turn on, inserts discs, syncs controller, etc. But no video output. Now, there's no damage to the actual port itself. I can't see anything there that would lead me to believe that there's actual port damage. Having a look at these ports, these are some of the old ones. You can see they're actually physically damaged. On an Xbox Series X, that is more typical. Um, they're really well anchored to the actual motherboard itself, unlike the PlayStation 5, we won't go there. They're really well anchored to the board, so they usually damage the tongue inside of the actual HDMI port itself. So usually pretty easy to see from the outside. Can't see it on that one, so let's start off on the television and have a quick look. So we'll turn it on. So what this one's doing is basically not displaying up there. Now with this particular model of TV, when I have got HDMI there, it means the television can see something coming from the HDMI. Uh, but I don't have a screen resolution here, so it's not actually sending a signal from the console itself. So let's pull it apart, take a look what we've got inside. Um, before we do that, we'll turn that off. Unplug the HDMI, nice and square, unplug that. We'll try and give you a nice close-up look of this HDMI port from the outside. As you can see, that HDMI port looks almost perfect. I would not say that that was a HDMI port fault. It's definitely a display, it could be booster IC, uh, could be pins knocked off the back. So at the back of the HDMI port, is a couple that we got out earlier. You can see the damage to the actual tongue in every single case. If you have a look at the ports here, they've actually got a bunch of solder points along the back here so there's one two three four five along the back maybe six and it's got these two anchor pins that go through the board to locate it and the four legs and then the 19 pins across the back so there's plenty of opportunity there to be held to the motherboard quite strongly compared to other models if you notice there at the bottom there's that gap my dirty thumb that gap at the bottom means that the cable's been wiggled around in there and then stretched it out. So that one's stretched out. That one's really stretched out. So that's the typical damage on a port. That one is definitely not showing any signs of, of damage in such a way. Hot plate is preheating. Sun is annoying the hell out of me. And we've got the board out. So let's have a look at this HDMI. Let's have a look at this HDMI. <laughs> Stop. Um, let's no. have a look. <laughs> uh, let's have a look at this HDMI port. Excellent, no pins are damaged. Unfortunately, my camera doesn't work on my actual microscope anymore. But let's have a closer look at this. You wouldn't learn. You won't learn on this one, I have no idea what's going on. I don't think I've got any encoder I see in stock. Okay. 
Okay, after about 20 minutes of poking and prodding, I've come to two conclusions. That chip there, and there's a Q-tip there for a size comparison. That chip there is a HDMI encoder, I see. So we are going to try. Yeah, cost $65 each. Crazy. Um, we've got a couple more there, so we're gonna try that first. If that's not the case, and I honestly don't think it is that, but it is the easier thing to try. We go across the other side. And we've got the HDMI booster IC, which is uh, that one there. And I do not have any of those in stock. So had a conversation with the customer, um, informed him of all the bad reasons why that is a bad reason to put a jumper on there. Um, and he said, throw the wires on and let's see how we go. Unfortunately, these aren't available, can't find them. They do come off the motherboards from a PS, no, it's the Xbox Series X, I think. Uh, they are PlayStation motherboards. They are a bunch of Xboxes. It's fairly sure the square board, oh no, that is the Pro. Okay, so I've already salvaged that one. U21, Booster IC. We've only got two boards, oh, three boards, sorry. And each one has that U21 been pilfered for spare parts. So I don't have one to give him, unfortunately. So we're just gonna have to send it and see. Add a little bit of flux. Grab some heat, 500 degrees, airspeed about 70. Right. New chip is on, bit of clean up. Now, I don't think this is the fault it's still definitely worth the effort to not have to do that booster I see and school traffic is in play behind me there we go there's not much to see there the theory is it should look the same so throw them out of the way don't lose them of course turn that off okay Test number one, after changing the HDMI encoder, I see. Uh, we might need to put a fan in there. Here we are, got a fan in there. Um, plug it in, turn it on. Turns on, which means again, we're getting a signal from the console, but there's still no connection. So the next thing is to run those wires. Jumper, the booster I see. Disappointing, I was hoping I didn't have to do that. I am not a huge fan of doing this. In fact, I will avoid this at every single step if I could. But you gotta do what the customer says you can do. And if the customer's educated, you gotta send it and see. So on the screen now, you can see what we've got to do. We've got the orientation right, so we've got the dot up there. So we've got the dot up in that corner there. Sit that sucker off and see what we come up with. She flew away to the ninth dimension, but luckily.
Okay, looking a bit better. <clears throat> now, at this point, I don't know whether I should pretend like I'm on television and cut all this time it takes to actually do this out, or just play it out in real time and let you watch the frustration of Pete trying to do something. He's not very confident doing. He does enjoy it, and I get a result, and I got good feedback. Sometimes I wonder whether doing this sort of stuff and being nice and honest is good enough, or you've got to lie in order to get more work. So I'll opt for honest. So I don't know if you can see, but these two go around to here and here, respectively. So I'll do those first. And I don't know if you can see this, but this is some mighty fine jumper wire. The idea is just to join all these points up that go together within the tip itself. And you just bypass the booster, I see. I'm gonna have to turn this light up. I'm sorry, guys. Hey, that's better. If you can see my face right now, you would see my tongue sticking out of my head. And of course, not only can you not see my face, my hand is good and proper in your road. I definitely think I could benefit from a $500 set of tweezers right now. Just give that some space. We'll tap that again with a little bit more solder. This time we're going to get some nice fine solder and add some to the end there. Obligatory wiggle test. Radio one. We might start from the top side on this one. Again, I'm talking like you can see. I'm hoping you can see the after effects of what I'm doing here. And it should be noted, if you're still here, we're right about a bloody like, because the amount of people I'm going to lose for doing videos like this, when they're here to see solar energy and batteries, is probably not going to be very nice. And I think that this other one was a tad too close. So I'm going to move him away from there a bit. Why have you gone to that one? Here we go. Okay, we'll give that a bit of a clean up. Now, I'm not going to put thermal material over the top of this. Uh, what do you call it? The board, the, the green stuff. Because I want this to be reversible. Because I guarantee you, with my warranty, I have a, I have a, 
uh, I don't care warranty. Whereas I don't care. Um, my workmanship is my badge of honor, I guess you'd say. So if he ever wants to go the other way, I will be more than happy when I have them in stock to replace this out for no extra cost. Because I would rather a, cap a customer be happy than a customer leave bad feedback. Let's see if we've got continuity between these two. And we do not. And we do. Cool. I'll just get those last three jumper wires done. And then I'll see you again in a second. Okay, don't know how well you can see this. That's my effort at a U21 bypass. I'm gonna say it again. Don't do it unless there is absolutely no other reason. Let's see if I can show you up there as well on the camera. Move it up a little bit. So we've got, where is it? Nice and solid. Then that one's just the loop, nice and solid. And this one goes from there to there. I know that's not that good, but I very rarely ever use the camera function. But there you go, let's put it together and see what comes of it. So the consoles are back together again. I'm not going to bother putting the fan in. Just want to quickly test it because I haven't got very high hopes of this actually working. So I'll turn it on. TV. Ah, looks like pretty much exactly the same thing as before. Ah. Ah. <laughs> 